Welcome, everyone, to today's enlightening discussion on health practices. It's often said that in the realm of health and wellness, not all advice is created equal. Today, we're diving deep into the world of health methodologies, specifically focusing on practices that, despite their popularity, are often eschewed by the medical community. We'll explore why 99% of doctors steer clear of these methods, grounded in scientific evidence. Let's embark on this journey, ranking these practices from the fifth to the first. Number 5. Detox Teas and Cleanses Numerous manufacturers and proponents of detox teas and cleanses claim that these products can work wonders for our health. They argue that the herbs and ingredients present in these teas possess unique properties that aid in the elimination of toxins from our bodies. However, when we closely examine the scientific research in this field, we find a different narrative. Research studies investigating the effectiveness of detox teas and cleanses have yielded mixed results. While some studies suggest potential benefits such as improved digestion and increased antioxidant intake, the overall evidence is limited and inconclusive. Moreover, it is important to note that our bodies are already equipped with highly efficient detoxification systems, primarily carried out by the liver and kidneys. These organs work tirelessly to filter and eliminate toxins, rendering the need for external detoxification methods questionable. Furthermore, the weight loss claims associated with detox teas and cleanses deserve careful scrutiny. While it is true that some individuals may experience temporary weight loss during a cleanse or detox period, this is often attributed to a reduction in calorie intake rather than any miraculous detoxifying properties. Once normal eating habits are resumed, the lost weight is typically regained. In addition to the lack of substantial scientific evidence, it is crucial to highlight the potential risks and side effects associated with detox teas and cleanses. These products often contain herbal ingredients that can have adverse effects on our health. For instance, certain herbs may interact with medications, disrupt electrolyte balance, or even cause gastrointestinal issues. Moreover, prolonged or frequent use of detox teas and cleanses can lead to nutrient deficiencies and disrupt the natural balance of our gut microbiota. Now, my dear students, it is important to emphasize that this discussion does not aim to discredit the entire concept of detoxification or the potential benefits of herbal teas. Rather, it serves as a reminder to approach these claims with a critical mindset and to rely on evidence-based practices. If you are genuinely interested in supporting your body's detoxification processes, I would like to steer your attention towards evidence-based lifestyle choices. Regular physical activity, a balanced and nutritious diet, and adequate hydration are key factors in promoting overall health and well-being. These practices support the natural functions of our organs and provide a solid foundation for a healthy lifestyle. While detox teas and cleanses may have gained popularity in recent years, scientific evidence suggests that their effectiveness is questionable at best. As aspiring intellectuals, it is crucial that we base our beliefs and choices on robust scientific research rather than marketing claims. Let us strive to embrace a holistic approach to health, focusing on sustainable lifestyle practices rather than quick fixes. Number 4. Avoidance of all fats. To comprehend the role of fats in our diet, we must first acknowledge that fats are an essential macronutrient. They serve as a concentrated source of energy, aid in the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins, and play a crucial role in maintaining healthy cell function. However, not all fats are created equal, and it is this distinction that forms the basis of our discussion today. Scientific research has shed light on the different types of dietary fats and their impact on our health. Saturated fats, primarily found in animal products and some plant-based oils, have long been associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. However, recent studies have challenged this belief, suggesting that the relationship between saturated fats and heart health may be more complex than previously thought. On the other hand, we have unsaturated fats, which can be further classified into monounsaturated fats and polyunsaturated fats. These fats, found in foods such as avocados, nuts, and fatty fish, have been shown to have beneficial effects on our cardiovascular health when consumed in moderation. 
They can help lower LDL cholesterol levels, reduce inflammation, and improve overall lipid profiles. Moreover, we cannot overlook the importance of essential fatty acids, such as omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. These fats play a vital role in brain function, cellular health, and the regulation of inflammation in our bodies. They are considered essential because our bodies cannot produce them on their own and must obtain them through our diet. Including sources of these essential fatty acids, such as fish, flax seeds, and walnuts, can contribute to our overall well-being. Now, let us address the claims that fat consumption leads to weight gain. While it is true that fats are more calorically dense compared to carbohydrates and proteins, it is an oversimplification to label fats as the sole culprit behind weight gain. The key to maintaining a healthy weight lies in achieving an energy balance, where the calories we consume are balanced with the calories we expend through physical activity. Consuming a moderate amount of healthy fats as part of a well-rounded diet can provide satiety, which may help control overall calorie intake. It is also worth mentioning that certain fat sources, such as trans fats, have been unequivocally linked to adverse health outcomes. Trans fats, commonly found in processed and fried foods, have been shown to raise LDL cholesterol levels and increase the risk of heart disease. The World Health Organization and many countries have taken significant steps to reduce the presence of trans fats in our food supply. The notion of avoiding all fats is an oversimplification that does not align with the scientific evidence at hand. While it is prudent to limit the consumption of unhealthy fats, such as trans fats, a more balanced approach is recommended when it comes to dietary fats. Incorporating moderate amounts of healthy fats, such as unsaturated fats and essential fatty acids, can have a positive impact on our overall health and well-being. Number 3. Relying solely on supplements for nutrition. Firstly, it is crucial to note that the human body is a complex biological system that thrives on the synergistic interactions of various nutrients. When we consume whole foods, these nutrients work together, facilitating optimal absorption and utilization. In contrast, supplements often provide isolated nutrients in high concentrations, which can disrupt this delicate balance and potentially lead to imbalances or adverse effects. Secondly, the bioavailability of nutrients in supplements may differ from that in whole foods. Bioavailability refers to the degree and rate at which a nutrient is absorbed and utilized by the body. While some supplements may provide high levels of specific nutrients, our bodies may not be able to absorb and utilize them as efficiently as when they are consumed through whole foods. Additionally, certain nutrients require the presence of other compounds found in whole foods to be properly absorbed and utilized. Furthermore, relying solely on supplements may lead to a limited dietary variety, which can have implications for our overall health. Whole foods offer a diverse range of nutrients, including phytochemicals and other bioactive compounds that have been associated with numerous health benefits. By focusing solely on supplements, we may miss out on the synergistic effects of these compounds, potentially compromising our well-being in the long run. It is also worth mentioning that supplements are not subject to the same rigorous regulations and testing as pharmaceutical drugs. While reputable supplement manufacturers adhere to quality standards, there is still a risk of contamination, inaccurate labeling, or the presence of undisclosed ingredients. This lack of regulation underscores the importance of obtaining nutrients from whole foods, where the nutrient content is naturally occurring and more easily traceable. Relying solely on supplements for nutrition is a practice that lacks the scientific evidence and holistic approach provided by a well-balanced diet of whole foods. While supplements can play a role in addressing specific nutrient deficiencies or supporting certain health conditions, they should be viewed as complementary to, rather than a replacement for, a diverse and nutritious diet. Optimal health and well-being are best achieved through the consumption of a variety of whole foods, which provide a symphony of nutrients and bioactive compounds that work together to support our overall health. Number 2. Extreme Caloric Restriction Firstly, extreme caloric restriction can lead to nutrient deficiencies. When we significantly reduce our caloric intake, we may not consume sufficient quantities of essential nutrients, including vitamins, minerals, and macronutrients such as proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. 
These nutrients are vital for the proper functioning of our bodies, and their deficiency can have detrimental effects on our health, including impaired immune function, decreased muscle mass, and hormonal imbalances. Secondly, extreme caloric restriction can negatively impact our metabolism. Our bodies are adaptive and strive to maintain a state of balance, known as homeostasis. When we restrict our caloric intake to an extreme extent, our bodies interpret this as a state of famine and respond by slowing down our metabolism. This adaptive response is an evolutionary mechanism that aims to conserve energy and ensure our survival during times of food scarcity. As a result, our bodies become more efficient at utilizing the limited calories we consume, making weight loss more challenging in the long run. Furthermore, extreme caloric restriction can have psychological and emotional repercussions. Food plays a crucial role in our social interactions and cultural experiences. When we excessively restrict our caloric intake, we may experience feelings of deprivation, isolation, and a strained relationship with food. This can lead to disordered eating patterns, such as binge eating or an unhealthy preoccupation with food and body image. It is also worth mentioning that extreme caloric restriction is not sustainable in the long term. While some individuals may experience rapid weight loss initially, studies have shown that the majority of people who engage in extreme caloric restriction regain the lost weight once they return to a more normal caloric intake. This phenomenon, known as weight cycling or yo-yo dieting, can have detrimental effects on our physical and mental health and may contribute to a negative cycle of weight fluctuations. Extreme caloric restriction is a practice that warrants careful consideration due to its potential risks and limitations. While reducing caloric intake to achieve weight loss or other health goals is a common approach, extreme restriction can lead to nutrient deficiencies, metabolic adaptations, psychological challenges, and unsustainable outcomes. It is essential to adopt a balanced and individualized approach to nutrition and weight management, under the guidance of qualified healthcare professionals, to ensure optimal health and well-being. Number 1. Ignoring mental health and overall wellness. Firstly, numerous studies have shown a strong correlation between mental health and physical health outcomes. For instance, individuals with chronic mental health conditions, such as depression or anxiety disorders, are at a higher risk of developing various physical health problems, including cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, and autoimmune disorders. The impact of mental health extends beyond the individual, as it also affects healthcare utilization, productivity, and overall quality of life. Secondly, the mind-body connection is further exemplified by the intricate relationship between stress and mental health. When we experience stress, whether it be from external pressures or internal struggles, our bodies release stress hormones that can have far-reaching consequences. Prolonged or chronic stress can lead to adverse effects on our immune system, cardiovascular health, and even accelerate the aging process. Moreover, stress can exacerbate existing mental health conditions or contribute to the development of new ones. Furthermore, mental health plays a pivotal role in our ability to adopt and maintain healthy lifestyle behaviors. It is well established that individuals with poor mental health are more likely to engage in unhealthy habits, such as smoking, excessive alcohol consumption, and sedentary behaviors. Conversely, prioritizing mental well-being can enhance our motivation, self-efficacy, and resilience, enabling us to make positive choices regarding nutrition, physical activity, and self-care. Additionally, mental health influences our social interactions and relationships, which are integral components of overall wellness. Healthy relationships and a strong support network have been shown to have a positive impact on mental health, promoting a sense of belonging, purpose, and emotional well-being. Conversely, neglecting mental health can lead to social isolation, strained relationships, and feelings of loneliness, which can have detrimental effects on our overall wellness. In conclusion, my dear students, ignoring mental health in the context of overall wellness is a grave oversight that fails to acknowledge the intricate connection between our minds and bodies. Scientific evidence overwhelmingly supports the notion that mental health is a fundamental pillar of our well-being, influencing our physical health, lifestyle choices, stress response, and social interactions. By neglecting mental health, 
we undermine our overall wellness and hinder our ability to lead fulfilling and balanced lives. Let us remember that mental health is not a luxury, but a necessity. It is imperative that we prioritize mental well-being, foster open conversations, and seek support when needed. Only by acknowledging and addressing the importance of mental health can we truly achieve holistic wellness. In conclusion, navigating the health and wellness landscape requires a discerning eye and a foundation in scientific evidence. By understanding why most doctors avoid these wrong health methods, we can make informed decisions that truly benefit our health and well-being. Let's embrace a balanced, evidence-based approach to health, focusing on comprehensive wellness that integrates the best of modern medicine with sensible lifestyle choices. Thank you for joining me in this exploration, and here's to making informed decisions for a healthier, happier life.